what I want, where I want, when I want, the way I want, with whom I want, for the price I want, with no hassle. That's a pretty big challenge, but all innovations progress towards that ideal vision. Each new innovation gets closer to that ideal for one or more outcome. He said customers didn't know they wanted some of the features that Gmail offered. Not true. Gmail didn't do anything people haven't wanted for the written communication since the beginning of time. It did some of the things better, but it didn't do anything new. In fact, the specifications for Gmail could have been written a thousand years ago. Whether it's email or letters written on parchment, the essential aspects of reading written communication has not changed and will never change. The desired outcomes are the same for reading all written communication. You want to find what you're seeking, when you're seeking it, and process the important information in a way that's useful for the task you're doing. The only thing that changes is how well that's done and the methods for doing it. Any product that does not at least partially achieve all essential outcomes will fail to satisfy customers. You don't have to do all of them great or perfectly, but you do have to do each and every one of them. The simple formula for what will be an innovation is it achieves each of the essential outcomes for the task the customer is trying to do and achieves one outcome or more better than what's on the market. Another really important point is too much bureaucracy kills innovation. But it's not quite as simple as that. Companies rarely make money from doing something new or one time. They make money from doing the same thing many times. So the types of controls for a manufacturing or sales organization won't work for innovation. But there can and should be effective controls. Google got lucky to hit it big before the dot-com bust when money was easy to get. They can afford to wait as long as they can to kill innovations, but I suspect that method just won't work for most businesses. Will it work for you? You don't have the resources to fiddle with ideas until they fizzle out. Plus, you might not have the time to experiment before competitors beat you to market. When he says, wait as long as you can to kill innovations, what he's really saying is they don't have a reliable method for recognizing innovations early on. One thing that's always true about innovations is it will be different from what's come before. That means entrenched experts will hate good innovations. But customers will love it. What you need is a way to let real customers tell you as quickly as possible if what you're doing is the right thing. There are two parts to doing this. First, start with outcome-based innovation methods, such as predictive innovation or stratagems technique. The outcomes never change, so if the idea satisfies all the outcomes, then it's good. If it doesn't satisfy all the outcomes, kill it right away. It just won't work. Second, you need to directly ask customers, does it satisfy the outcome better than what is already available? Do you care about satisfying this outcome better at this time? And are we satisfying it properly? Only customers can answer those questions. Ask the customers as soon as possible and as frequently as possible. One really great innovation was the spelling correction and search suggestion feature of Google's search engine. And this came about by watching what customers actually did and liked. Regardless what experts say, the only real expert is the customer. They might not be able to tell you what they want, but if you watch them, you'll see exactly what they want. Find that out and deliver it. Three suggestions he makes really boil down to the same concept. He says, allow people to work on things they are passionate about. Well, innovations are projects. All innovations are projects. They have a beginning and an end. Passion is very important to pursuing anything through to completion. And Passion especially important for things that are new. So this rule is very meaningful for moving from the idea to delivered innovation. Passion can't be forced on someone. It comes from within. And it only thrives when people have freedom. And that's the key element, freedom. 
Give employees the freedom to follow their passions. Give customers the freedom to walk away, which will also lead them to be able to walk to you anytime they want. This will build real strength in their marketplace because they'll love you rather than need you. And also freedom to personalize what you offer them. Their improvements will often point you to the next big innovation. Another thing he says is use your products. Well, the sentiment is right, but it's not always appropriate. Unless you actually benefit from using your product, your input probably won't be meaningful. Of course, if you could benefit from your product and you don't use it, there's a serious problem. But if you really aren't the target market of your product, what you should do is become intimately involved with people who are and do use your product. Talk to them, watch what they do and don't do. Make sure you understand what they're really trying to achieve, then figure out how to help them do it. And he finishes up by saying that leadership is essential to creating diverse teams and that is important to innovation. Well, different talents and skills and points of view can be very helpful to innovation. But in the real world, most companies have to use the resources they already have. Fortunately, if you use the right system, you can achieve great innovation success. And in the end, making the decisions that create success is the truest sign of leadership.